of our Joel HX Maintenance with Nutanix Lifecycle Management webinar. In today's webinar, you'll learn how to use LCM to identify and qualified upgrade parts, manage dependencies and maintenance mode, all whilst getting the most out of your Think Agile Hatech series technology and investment. Your presenters for today are Dan Morris and Charlie Lawford from Lenovo, Cameron Stockwell from Nutanix, and Hugh DeVoe, our special customer reference from Helios. Lastly, if you have any questions throughout the presentation today, please feel free to enter your question in the Q&A panel at the bottom of your, of your screen. Charlie will be monitoring the questions and will answer them accordingly throughout the presentation. We will be holding a Q&A session after the presentation, so to ask a question, please use the raise hand button in the middle of your Zoom toolbar. For phone participants, please use the star nine to raise your hand at question time. So now, without any further ado, let's begin. I will hand over to Dan to get us started. Dan? Thank you very, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining the call. Um, really appreciate it. Just to let you know, at the moment, I'm about 80 k's from Turnfield, so I'm standing in the middle of the driest bush you can ever find, anyway. Um, we wanted to run this webinar uh, because as, as our customer base grows, as Nutanix, as a product, our HX product becomes more and more I guess feature rich is another way of saying complicated. There's more and more there's more and more factors now involved in the product than ever before. And especially with things like firmware upgrades, managing software, and also as the platform moves um, moves forward to be more like a cloud platform and, and its maturity, we thought this is a good, good time maybe just to get back to basics, explain to everyone why it's important to keep everything up to date, how to manage it in a HX environment, and also we've got We've got, like said, we've got Cameron and Hugh on the call just to take us through what's what's coming in the product. So Cameron Cameron's part of the project management team. He'll he'll uh, he'll introduce himself, I'm sure. But Cameron's the guy who taught me how to use the tanks about five or six years ago. So he's been involved with the product for a very long time and understands what it takes to be involved with OEM as well, which is really handy. And Hugh, again, I've known Hugh since, since I started learning about the tanks. He's been a, a customer for a very very long time. And obviously we've got Charlie there as well too. Um, it's, it's, in, it's in the HX team here in Australia and New Zealand. So we, we look after all of Australia and New Zealand and, and BG. So if you do have questions after this, please let us know. But I think we'll kick off with the camera now. So thank, thanks a lot for doing. No worries, Dan. Yeah, you're very difficult to hear, but that's all right. I think we'll, we'll uh, push on. So hi everyone, my name is Cameron Stockwell. I'm uh, uh, with the product management team at Nutanix. I look after uh, LCM, uh, so lifecycle management, which is uh, the new way uh, to do one-click upgrades, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that today. Uh, but I also look after Foundation, which is our deployment uh, software as well. So uh, I've been with the company uh, quite a long time, as Dan said, probably about close to seven years now. Um, and yeah, it's been uh, quite a journey. So uh, what I'll do if I've still got control, let's just go through. So today we're going to just talk about um, the uh, LCM, um, you know, the, the simplifying upgrades and maintenance. Um, I will say at the start that uh, some of the items that we talk about is roadmap uh, here. So um, take that into account when you're, uh, if you are making any purchasing decisions. Um, and this is a standard disclaimer. Uh, this, in fact, uh, what we're presenting today um, is quite uh, new. So uh, it, the basis of it was what we presented at the .next conference over in uh, the USA uh, in May. Uh, we are about to uh, have our similar conference in Europe uh, in a couple of weeks time. So you guys are getting the, the newest uh, information. So just with that. Okay, so as you know, people that have been in data centers for quite a long time, um, you'll see that the session uh, focus today is all about upgrades, right? So the idea of uh, Nutanix is to remove the complexity around all the traditional 3T operations that you may have in your data centers and all the cycle that you go through every you know, three, four or five years um, around buying, deploying and manage. So the, today's focus is purely on the upgrade side um, and how Nutanix tackles this problem, right? So the idea is that LCM uh, comes in and removes that operational pain. The idea being deploy your clusters, um, it's less management and less pain to keep them up to date, both in, in terms of firmware and software. And the, uh, the other advantage of LCM, and I'll get to in a little bit of the detail, is that we provide continuous updates uh, from the various uh, components that we support. 
um, your clusters are connected to the internet, uh, they download um, the new LCM framework or the new LCM software that we have in built in our clusters. Uh, and with that update comes new supportability modules. We call them modules. So um, it may be a software module, for example, our own software, AOS, uh, NCC, Foundation, and so on. Uh, or it can be firmware from uh, hardware manufacturers such as Lenovo. So that's the idea is to remove this pain of, if you like, separation of uh, operational tasks around keeping your clusters up to date, whether it be firmware or your traditional software. So we've been doing this for a while now but in terms of the one-click upgrades. It's one of our, I suppose, most loved feature sets. Um, as you can see, this is probably, for those of you that have been Nutanix uh, customers for a while, uh, you'd be used to this screen. This is a traditional sort of prism uh, management plane screen that we do where we uh, uh, control our software upgrades traditionally. And as you can see, there's sort of uh, five uh, topics at the, uh, at the top, AOS, file server, hypervisor, and so on. You click a button, run through some checks, and away it goes. Now, that's all been good, um, but our platform growth and our software growth has meant that this doesn't scale, and I'll get into the detail uh, why in a second. Um, but the whole idea is, what if we did really make upgrades that simple? You click a button and go. And the results sort of speak to themselves over the last few years. We've got um, a lot of people that have uh, stated uh, publicly on social media and, and certainly on Twitter and LinkedIn, how they've had a really good experience with the one-click upgrades, whether it be software or firmware uh, or hypervisor even. So we've had a lot of, and Hugh's, uh, <laughs> Hugh's the one with the uh, drinking red wine, but he's on a call later today. Um, but we, we sort of um, have had a really good experience with this over the years. And as I said, it's sort of, um, it's, uh, on us to, as a company, not to sort of take this and go, well, job's done. We're sort of pushing ourselves to try and take it to the next level and where we need to expand the one-click uh, ideology and make it even more simple each time. So some of these um, examples you see are actually quite old, right? So 2017 from Hugh, 2015 from Matt and so on. So that's, you know, we've been doing this for a while, but as I said, we're sort of not stopping uh, where, you know, we're not resting on our laurels here. We're, we're keep pushing, keep improving. So with that, why do we need to change? So the, uh, one of the things we're doing is we're changing from that old or that traditional one click uh, option where I showed the screenshot before, and we're changing to this new product, relatively new product called LCM or Lifecycle Manager. Um, the main reason why we're changing is the Nutanix portfolio in terms of hardware and software is growing. And not only is the, that portfolio growing, but also the deployment method. So in the early days, we just had a, one platform and maybe even one hypervisor in AOS, uh, and that was fine. And everyone just sort of deployed it. But as you can sort of see where we're going, we're shifting towards multiple hardware vendors, um, you know, cloud-based deployments. Uh, we've announced Xi clusters and a few other things. Um, deployment model can be the robo, can be the branch, uh, the edge, um, but also the core data center, of course, as well as what we're doing in terms of the, the hybrid cloud uh, offerings with DR as a service and so on. So we need to continue to keep uh, the one-click methodology uh, front of mind um, in all our design. So this is why, in a sense, we've had to change. Um, what you saw in the screenshot before was embedded in AOS or embedded in Prism. Um, that's fine for when you're only a couple of platforms and maybe a couple of hypervisors and so on. Um, but it doesn't scale when you're looking at this sort of um, ultimate goal. So what we've had to do is we've had to pull the upgrade mechanism away from traditional one click and in fact, create this new tool called LCM, which is in itself an application. Uh, it's an application that is independent of the underlying AOS and independent of the management plane as well as Prism. Um, this has been a journey for a couple of years now. We introduced this in AOS 5. Um, it's, we're now at sort of uh, AOS 5.11. Uh, we've just made some changes to the UI. We finally got the, the UI to be independent. The goal is though, is that everything from the traditional one click will eventually make it into LCM. Um, and I'll get to some of the advantages uh, on why that is as well. Um, but it does cover firmware and also we're starting to, you'll see some of the traditional um, software start moving to uh, LCM as well. Also in terms of Prism Central, uh, some of you may be using Prism Central for some of the uh, 
at more advanced products we have, such as Calm, Carbon, uh, and Objects, that's already in LCM uh, in Prism Central. So you can sort of see that we're sort of in this sort of transition period, uh, but everything is going towards the new and we're not really developing the old anymore. So with that, um, as I mentioned before, it's very much an app, right? So LCM itself, uh, I'll go over it again, is the is independent of AOS and Prism. Um, in terms of the design, the idea is that the idea is we don't want you to read release notes, right? The complexity when you have all that sort of different hardware or uh, different models of hardware, even from the same manufacturer, different Nutanix software, you may just be using normal HCI or you'd be using some of the advanced products. They mo and hypervisors for that matter, they all have interdependencies. And the idea of um, having to self-manage that or you as an admin having to run through and, and do all the checks yourself before you do any upgrades, it's just a pain. So the idea is that all our modules that we develop um, uh, refer back to a dependency matrix, uh, a database if you like, uh, that we have internally. And we can determine when you click a button, um, is this uh, an upgrade that your system is ready to go to or are there other dependencies that you have to do first? Uh, and we'll take care of that for you. So the idea is that there's no reading of release notes. If the host has to be restarted, let's say it's a BIOS upgrade, uh, we'll take care of the, the vMotions for you um, and so on. So the idea is you just click and go. Prism Central is um, the next phase. So once we complete the transition of LCM in the sort of Prism element or the normal cluster level, uh, we're going to uh, bring that up into Prism Central. We do have some things, as I mentioned, in Prism Central now, uh, but the idea is that uh, eventually, uh, you'll get to the roadmap a little bit later, is that we want to have this ability that it doesn't matter where your clusters are. You want to do a BIOS upgrade, for example, you should be able to do it all remotely um, via a Prism Central interface. And as I mentioned, the, the, the complexity removal, this is the big one. So, um, you know, gone will be the days of having to uh, refer to a, uh, manufacturer's matrix of what is compatible with what and working it out manually, right? Um, so that's that's the main thing. And it, the key is it's an app and we can in, app, um, independently upgrade that app regardless of what the, the platform is. And that also helps with limiting bugs or, you know, uh, things that we discover in the field. If, we, if there is a customer found defect, we can repair it relatively quickly, re-release it without you um, changing your ALS. So if I skip back to um, a traditional one click, this is sort of the sort of monolithic, if you like one at a time upgrade. So you selected the upgrade, um, you looked at all the the, com uh, the components for that, the metadata, the actual binary, and then you went and hit an, uh, went ahead and upgraded AOS, for example. But you couldn't do multiple things at once. Once this was complete, you then go on to the next one. Let's say it was files, you upgraded the file server completed that, and then maybe you wanted to do the hypervisor, you did that. So it was sort of something that it was monolithic, one at a time. And this is what LCM is, is uh, tackling as well. So how we're doing it is we're sort of treating it very similar to uh, your traditional Linux sort of upgrades via YUM, where um, there's a repository and you just point your cluster to that uh, repository. Uh, and then we take care of uh, all the necessary binaries for you. Right, and then you're uh, based on an inventory operation. So you basically are scanning your cluster. Once that inventory is done, we present with you uh, present to you the the status of the cluster, and then we'll also show you, as you can see in the screenshot, there may be some firmware, for example, um, that's available to be updated. And you can go to the firmware tab, um, click a button, uh, follow the prompts, and install it accordingly. Okay, so that's that's a little bit different from doing one at a time. Um, you can do multiple. So if there were software available uh, updates as well, you could select the software and firmware at the same time. And LCM has the intelligence to work out uh, what to order um, and do all the orchestration for you. So how do we do that, right? So, um, you know, how do we make that uh, work and optimize the experience? So um, if I just play this little video, uh, hopefully that comes through. So I've got a quick little demo. Um, this is on an NX platform. So this is the, the, the new um, 5.11 UI, uh, AOS 5.11. Um, we've got an inventory operation, so you can also export that. So let's say you've got a change control mechanism that you wanna work out what's gonna be updated. Um, you can certainly export that to a CSV. Uh, we also have different views. Um, this cluster has nine available updates um, and it, you can change via host view or component view. Um, but in an example here, we'll have uh, nine firmware updates across three hosts. And the three 
uh, items are BIOS, HBA, and BMC. You can select one host or you can select one component um, if, if your hardware manufacturer allows it. So, um, you know, it's free to choose whether you want some, one, or all of the components to be upgraded. And LCM will automatically select any dependencies for you. So, for example, right now you can see that um, BIOS requires also the BMC update. So, it automatically selects the BMC. Um, you can select one host and then, you know, one component of another host, two hosts, and so on. So, it's completely up to you. You don't have to do the whole cluster. You, a lot of people uh, do one host at a time, mainly because of the time taken per host. Uh, and that can change depending on the make and model of the, of the host. Um, or you can select all. all right? So, and then you click update. Uh, and then it will present with you a plan, uh, apply the updates. It'll tell you what's going to happen. It's going to reboot uh, one host at a time. And, and just like everything we do in Nutanix, it's uh, one host at a time, no matter how big the cluster. So it can take some time to roll through the cluster. And this is why some people um, like to do, you know, a few hosts at a time. Uh, it's fully supported by doing it that way uh, and then roll through um, the rest of your cluster, particularly if you've got a large number of nodes, if you've got like 16 or 32 nodes. Uh, it can take uh, several uh, hours. So some people like to split it up. Um, so with that, just want to quickly moving, um, as I said, we're moving, the roadmap is developing quite quickly now. Uh, we're a little bit behind, if I'm brutally honest, uh, on some of these items. We've been talking about some of these items for about 12 months now. Um, but, you know, the the... Uh, software transition is underway right now. Um, Q4 this year, that's a calendar Q4. Uh, we should have AHV NCC Foundation uh, and the new um, LCM APIs uh, put in there. Lenovo is obviously a supported platform and has been for a while. Um, I'll get to uh, Lenovo specific roadmap in a second. Uh, as you can see, Calm, Carbon and Objects is already supported in software and then we'll roll through the rest. So. Um, we believe, you know, we're trying to target mid next year is when we, you'll start seeing the Prism Central centralized upgrades. So that, that orchestration um, of all uh, such upgrades, firmware or software from Prism Central. But this is sort of the rough sort of timeline we're looking, um, looking to. As I said, it can change. Um, foundation will be at end of the month, uh, this month. Uh, AHV, NCC will be soon after. And then by the end of the year, we should have the uh, APIs as well. Uh, with, uh, with respect to Lenovo, um, I'll just quickly cover that. So uh, we'll have, at the end of this month, there's a 223 release. Uh, the Sardomi M2 updates will be there. Um, the Perly XCC upgrades on Hyper-V. Um, there's also um, a NIC that I believe is, we're trying to get in for the September 30 release uh, for Lenovo. Uh, I know we're pending one final test on that, so it may be pushed out. Uh, but we'll try to get it in for the 223 release. Um, the next major release after that is the is the 2.3 release that is targeted for end of November. I think it's more realistic to be December, uh, and that will have the Lenovo HPAs as well. That's been a long time coming. I, I know for a lot of people, so um, we'll have that as well. What's new in the 2.3, which is the November December release? Um, we will support NCC Foundation and AHV upgrades uh, by that time. Uh, the APIs is a, is a, a long-standing ask uh, for those that are into automation. Um, the target is that anything you can do in the uh, UI, you should be able to um, query our LCM APIs. Uh, one of the big things for some, um, you know, firewalls and, and backup products and so on is the pinned guest VMs. Uh, we were having an issue with, um, because we expect when we put a host into uh, reboot to apply BIOS. We expect all the VMs to be able to be moved. Um, when they're not, the, the upgrade would fail. So we're going to present to you some um, options around how to handle those pin VMs, e.g. from Zerto or some uh, other manufacturers. Um, we'll present you with, operation, uh, with options to power off or come back and you do it and come, uh, come back and uh, continue the upgrade. And also there's a big focus on decreasing the time. This is something that we're fully aware of that um, across the board, a lot of the upgrades, as I said, take a lot of time, a lot of time, whether it be software or uh, from the firmware uh, manufacturers. And we're working with those manufacturers to get the time down as well. So, um, so far we've got AOS upgrades. Uh, there's about a 30% uh, decrease in time taken to do AOS. 
Uh, we do also, we're looking at different ways of handling disks, uh, disk firmware at the moment. Um, we used to uh, do them in line with the CVM uh, without a host reboot. Uh, the advice from the hardware manufacturers came back as they wanted to reboot the host into a separate environment for uh, safety reasons uh, around the data uh, when the firmware is being applied to those individual data disks. Uh, we think we can uh, go back to CVM now, so that will significantly reduce the time to do uh, all your SSDs and your SATA DOMs and, uh, uh, and your um, SATA drives and so on. So uh, that's underway. So that'll be first coming up in 2.3 at the end of the year and then continuing on till next year. So just a, a quick summary of the takeaways before I hand over um, is that, you know, LCM is an independent upgradable app uh, from under, uh, separate from the underlying AOS Prism and Hypervisor versions. We do recommend, however, uh, as I'll get to us in a second, that you do keep your software up to date for the best experience. Um, we have a dependency database to make sure that the, the ideology is maintained of Nutanix of the one-click simplicity. Uh, and it is the new standard. So we, aren't we are not developing uh, the old Prism uh, one-click anymore. All the effort is to going right now into LCM uh, to make sure this sort of next phase of our growth uh, is uh, maintained. And then lastly is that, uh, sorry, consider upgrade times for your cluster designs, right? So more, uh, more nodes, there is a, a downside of longer times, particularly in recent times, the gone are the days where you could just ignore firmware, uh, thanks to the Spectre and Meltdown and all the other associated uh, fixes. Um, from what I'm seeing, they seem to be coming out every quarter now we're, we're getting more and more demand for firmware to be um, uh, upgraded uh, every quarter from the different manufacturers so uh, i think this is um, something you're going to have to take into account with your designs is that maybe it's a little bit smarter now reduce that failure to main size you know don't have 64 node clusters or 32 node clusters and try and um, get it down so that your upgrade times are, are, are lesser um, and the only other thing I'll state uh, before I hand over to Hugh is that um, with firmware, um, it is a good idea and best practice, and we do publish this on the Nutanix portal, um, upgrade your software before doing the firmware. As much as LCM um, tries to take care of it all uh, automatically, uh, while we were in this transition uh, of adding the modules to LCM, uh, LCM only understands the modules that are in it. So if there is software that is still in the old method, uh, you still have to do that uh, manually while we're sort of catching up and doing this transition. So keep your software up to date first before doing uh, firmware and you should have a really good experience. Um, so with that, I'll hang around on the call, obviously for, for questions at the end, but with that, I'll hand over to, to Hugh. Awesome. Thank, thanks, Cam. Um, uh, that was that was that was really good. Um, I'll, I'll bring up a, a question uh, later towards the end. Um, and yeah, now I'd like to hand over to Hugh. Um, he, look, Hugh is a very long time advocate of both uh, Nutanix and Lenovo, um, and I uh, really appreciate him having him on the call. I uh, really wanted to bring Hugh in uh, just to kind of give everyone a sense from a you know customer experience perspective um, uh, about how um, you know how LCM and uh, XClarity and that kind of stuff is actually used in the field. So um, over to you, Hugh. Yeah, hi, hi guys. Hi everyone. Um, so, yeah. Um, so I am, or well, have been, the customer of Nutanix in now two different companies for probably the last five, six years, five years probably. Um, and so uh, we've, well, I've seen the, the the transition that Cameron was was talking about. So going back from, you know, doing one click upgrades or checking release notes to now, um, I guess just using LCM where, wherever uh, we can. So our current footprint is about 50 or so uh, Nutanix nodes um, divided up in, into various uh, various uh, clusters depending on, on some use case. And so we've started to uh, use more and more LCM to, you know, almost well, the way I see it, I guess, from, from an LCM point of view is that the traditional way is more you updating a, a specific package. LCM is more like a, a Linux package manager where effectively you check, well, dependencies are checked. And then if something needs to be deployed at the same time as one of the upgrade that you were targeted, then, you know, everything is taken care of. So um, that means 
that when there's things popping up with a firmware to be updated, then that can be integrated. It's not two separate plans to do um, to do those those upgrades. So I think that's 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 really helping. Um, it definitely helps us um, in, in terms of you know management of the overall infrastructure, where we're not we don't have to discover those things whenever we're planning something. Um, then at least we can go back to to that tool. So as Cameron mentioned, there's, there's still a few things that you know are done manually or outside of LCM. Uh, but knowing what was before LCM and where it's heading, uh, I can see that the direction is is pretty good for uh, from a system uh, admin point of view, um, where you know there's less and less things that we have to worry about that it. It, will something break when I do this upgrade or anything like that? That that becomes less of a less of an issue. Um, so yeah, um, there, there's still a few things. You know, I think that uh, XCar really has been quite good, and Lenovo in general has been quite good in doing the the best recipes. Um, so the fact that you know now we we have Nutanix that will integrate with with that kind of um, of best practice. Uh, firmware and software management. I think it's it's a it, it's really good um, new way to to do deployments and to do upgrades on on infrastructure. Excellent. Thank you, Hugh. I really appreciate it. Um, I might, um, if you don't mind, just hang around for Q and A as well, and uh, just yeah, yeah. questions questions from the field. I, I I think I think I saw a question popping out about. Uh, or has been answered already about licensing. So yeah, the, the LCM stuff. That that's the the good thing about that that Nutanix platform is um, there's lots of things in there that are you know built in that you, it's not something extra that you you take on the side. And the most important thing I think is that it enables people like us to keep everything updated as 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 much as we can to you know the current version or the minus one version but there's no it, it, it there's no big issue on updating things in, into that environment anymore yeah perfect okay thank you um and look thank you uh, matt and, and marcus uh for your questions um uh, i'll just I'll go, I'll go through this next bit and then we'll uh, we'll, we'll save the responses to that for uh, the q a at the end um all right so uh for myself let me make sure i've got control of the screen back. Um, so um, Pam kind of covered this off. I, I just wanted to um, include a little bit of a roadmap information um, around LCM. So you'll see down the bottom, I've just highlighted uh, effectively what Cam already mentioned around the uh, version support for uh, the HX NIC um, and N.2 in September, um, and then the HBA support in, in December. Um, and look, you'll notice there's a few other uh, interesting things on on the roadmap there as well, uh, things like larger SSDs, uh, HX mine, 100 gig networking, all that kind of stuff. So uh, you know we can kind of get offline and uh, discuss uh, some of those other um, um, uh, futures uh, when um, if, if if you're interested. Um, so I think what what I kind of wanted to cover off um, is and and the main reason why we've uh, decided to do this webinar is that. Um, LCM is a, is, is, a, is a fantastic tool and I think, you know, Cam and the team are doing an, an amazing job in developing it. Um, but in the meet, for, for the moment, it's not complete, right? There are some components, uh, both on a Nutanix and a Lenovo side that can't be done through LCM. Um, and so, you know, for the past year, we, we had our first LCM support uh, with things like UEFI and SSDs uh, last December. Um, and so there's been quite a long period of time where um, uh, things have had to be done outside of LCM, um, and in the case of AOS, for example, still had to be done through one click. Um, so I really wanted to kind of take the opportunity to communicate an update uh, from a Lenovo perspective, um, you know, not only what the roadmap is, but also um, the way that we approach uh, the hardware firmware updates um, uh, from, a, you know, from, from a Lenovo perspective, um, and just try and communicate some of this right because to be to be perfectly honest a lot of the documentation is not that great and that's something that we're absolutely working on. 
Um, so from a Lenovo firmware perspective, uh, we publish uh, what's known as our best recipes, all right? And I've got that up on the screen here. So uh, there's a link, it's, it's very searchable in Google, just search for HX best recipes uh, and you'll get this link. Um, periodically, we will publish the latest version of our best recipes. And you'll see that um, at the moment we're up to version 4.2. Um, and a best recipe is effectively uh, Lenovo's way of assisting our customers and our partners with um, ongoing day two life cycle operations of their HX clusters. Um, and uh, we do it across all of our Think Agile products. Um, but effectively, it takes all of these different firmware components um, that, uh, that are required within a, a hardware platform. And we do all of the testing and the certification on the, and the validation of these firmwares before we release them. Right, so that you and you know your customers can be um, can be confident that these solutions are going to work when you deploy them. All right, so you can see from the screenshot there that we're looking at a um, a specific set of HX nodes, so the thirteen twenty and the uh, the twenty three twenty, um, and within that best recipe we include the X Clarity controller, the UEFI, uh, networking storage, so on and so forth. All right, so what's represented there is all of the different links to go and download those specific firmwares. Um, but what I wanted to go through today was how do we, how do you collect those firmwares, um, how do, and then how do you apply them and push them out to, uh, to your clusters, right? Um, and this is where X Clarity comes in. So um, uh, X Clarity is a, a suite of products, um, including the X Clarity controller that sits on, on the hardware itself. Um, but we also have the X Clarity administrator, which is what we're gonna focus on today. Um, an XClarity administrator is our um, discovery, inventory, and asset management tool um, that also handles things like real-time monitoring and, and fault handling. Um, uh, can do OS implementations, configuration patterns, uh, but most importantly for our discussion today, um, uh, allows you to create policy-based uh, firmware packages and push those out to your clusters. All right, so um, most people will be familiar with, with, with XClarity, but just to kind of uh, set the scene. So, in terms of the guidance, um, we, within XClarity Administrator, we have a firmware repository. Um, and so, there's a couple of ways of getting your best recipe uh, into XClarity. Um, you can use your firmware repository to download every different firmware package that is available for a specific piece of hardware. Um, so, you can see there, for example, I've highlighted uh, HX3720, which is our 2U4 node platform. Um, and you can go through and say, download every, every single piece of firmware that is available for this. Um, one of the things to be aware of is that when you do that, um, those firmwares that you download are not necessarily going to follow best recipe. All right. Um, so that's one way of, of getting, getting the firmwares in there. The other way is to use that best recipe link and download each piece of firmware individually. So if you do it the first way and you've downloaded all of the firmwares for a specific appliance, um, the next stage is to go and create what's called a compliance policy. All right, and this is where you can take all of those firmwares that have been downloaded and create a policy based around, for example, best recipe. So you'll see in this example, we've got our HX3720 and we've created a compliance policy uh, for best recipe 4.2. All right, and through going through the process of that, um, you refer back to the best recipe page and you select the relevant firmwares that, um, that that best recipe represents. All right, um, so this is, I mean, this is not just HX, this also, uh, this is all of our Think Agile products, but you can also create these compliance policies for, uh, for any of our uh, hardware products, right, whether it's system SR650 server um, or, or a blade, for example. So once you've created that compliance policy, um, we then can select the specific nodes within your HX cluster. And again, I've got the, the HX3720s selected here. Um, and you can go through and you can apply um, and activate those, um, uh, uh, that compliance policy that you've created based on the best recipe. All right, so um, you can see here on the screen here, I've got three specific nodes uh, that have been selected. Um, I've selected the, the, the relevant compliance policy, um, and then you can drop down the menu and you can go through and you can perform those updates. Now, what's important to understand here is that um, XClarity doesn't um, 
have any links into PRISM, which will allow it to understand the, uh, that, that it's updating a cluster, right? So there's not gonna be any integration between X Clarity and the nodes to say, hey, I need to migrate these VMs into, uh, onto other nodes in the cluster, shut down the VM and then shut down the nodes, right? So mm -hmm. when you go through and you do this process, um, it, it's, it's a little bit more manual for the moment, um, uh, in that you can apply all of these policies to, let's say, in this example, three nodes, and you can then go and shut down each of those nodes one by one, all right? Um, we have a, a concept called either immediate or delayed activation. So if you want to do one node at a time through X Clarity Administrator, um, you can select that node um, and you can, you can perform the, 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 uh, the migration of the workloads off, shutting down the CVM, and then you can do an immediate activation of these compliance policies um, onto that specific node. Or you can say, here's three nodes, here's seven, eight, nine, ten nodes, and I'm going to do a delayed activation. And what that means is that XClarity is going to wait until you manually reboot each one of those nodes in sequence before it actually applies those firmwares. And we find that a lot of customers like using that and it saves them, saves them a lot of time. Um, so yeah, so that look, that, that pretty much covers, um, uh, I guess, a, a high level run through of, of the best practices of using X Clarity. Um, and as I mentioned, right, this is kind of a, this is the way of doing things as of now, um, while LCM is fully developed and, and finished from both a Nutanix and a Lenovo perspective, but you know, we really wanted to take the opportunity to, to kind of share these, these best practices. Um, and the last slide here is just some, some links. Obviously, I plan on kind of sending this deck out. Um, there's a few links here around you know, best recipe, um, some of our documentation around um, how you go about doing firmware and driver updates using XClarity, um, some videos, and then also a couple of Nutanix links as well. All right, so uh, with that, um, I'm going to open it up to Q&A and uh, I might just start off with uh, some of the questions that we've got in the, uh, the, the Q&A boxes. Um, so I'll start with Marcus. Thank you, mate, um, for jumping on board. So if we're looking to do upgrades, LCM, then X Clarity separately, we've lost messaging around LCM. When in 20 will it be fully integrated? All right. So, um, so, so look, it, it's a very relevant question, and this is again the purpose of today is that I think the guidance is to do what you can within LCM, and then use one click and X Clarity for um, for for things that can't be upgraded using the LCM framework. Um, in terms of when it's going to be fully integrated, um, uh, as you as you saw from the roadmap, uh, fingers crossed we'll have our final piece or Lenovo HX um, integrated in December. Um, all right, so I hope that helps. Um, please uh, provide some, some feedback in the box if, if you want some more clarity. Um, another question from, from Jay. Uh, will X Clarity admin still be needed when LCM supports Lenovo X HX? Uh, we've had a lot of issues with X Clarity admin while NX is so easy to maintain with LCM. Um, so, Recommendation is absolutely. Um, X Clarity is not just for firmware deployment, right? X Clarity is a data center uh, management inventory um, uh, solution, uh, of which has many other uses outside of just doing firmwares. Uh, there's things like X Clarity Energy Manager, which allows you to to manage the energy utilization of your nodes, for example. Um, so, so yes, we would continue to recommend to use X Clarity. Um, however, the idea is that from a firmware you know, best recipe and Nutanix software perspective, um, LCM will be the, uh, the, the best um, solution to use. Charlie, it's Daniel here. Um, can yes, you hear me okay? Yeah, sure. Just, just, just to add to that quickly, there's, there's two, there's a couple of products, but there's the, the one thing I just want to point out, there's X Clarity Controller, XCC, and then there's LXCA, which is um, X Clarity Administrator. Right, so XCC is your out-of-band management. Think of it like your ILO, your iDirect, the rest of it. That's built into the box, and that's what LCM will call when it's doing its stuff. Now, as Charlie explained well there, there's more to 
uh, ex clarity administrator than just doing firmware stuff. So we have a thing called predictive fault analysis in our in our hardware where let's say a memory dim is 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 looking like it's about to error. We can have it predictively uh, alert that that's going to fail before it happens. Now. Um, the alerting in, in, in Nutanix is fantastic, but it doesn't get to that level. So this is why we need, why we're going to leverage the both. But in terms of your day-to-day -day admin, you won't necessarily need administrator to, to manage your cluster. That, that's all. That's all. Yeah. So, I mean, also a good point, right? In addition to that, um, XClarity includes the Lenovo phone home uh, piece, right? So uh, while Nutanix has, has Pulse, uh, um, uh, our phone home um, uh, capability is driven through XClarity administrator. Um, all right, so another question of Marcus. Um, how do we check that firmware upgrade uh, does not cause a problem when doing LCM upgrade? Likewise, the other way around. I might throw that one over to, to Cam. Yeah, so, um, so before we advertise uh, an LCM upgrade that's available, um, let's say, for example, the Lenovo package that comes from uh, Lenovo, both Lenovo and LCM Engineering do tests to make sure that the um, the package is ready to go and and, uh, uh, and ready for release. Now, obviously, you know it can be thousands of, of different clusters and, and um, you know combinations. So sometimes things get slipped through, but uh, it is tested. It is verified by both uh, us and uh, Lenovo before it is published. Cool. Thank you. Um, Cam, I actually had another, um, uh, another question for you. Um, obviously, we publish our best recipes around, around firmware. Um, is the understanding of those best recipes going to be fully baked into LCM um, from a dependency point of view? So, you know, if you click HBA uh, uh, and that is part of a best recipe 4.3, for example, uh, that it's going to recommend updating all of the other components to that best recipe level. Yeah, so my understanding is the, the OEMs, uh, of, you know, including Lenovo, uh, give us a, a binary file that they have deemed as a best recipe across the board. So they won't necessarily allow the individual component selection um, via LCM. Um, that's the same from Dell, from HP, and, and certainly from Lenovo. So uh, when you're applying the LCM-based uh, uh, firmware upgrade for Lenovo, um, you'll get a best recipe that is provided to us from Lenovo. Now, there can be a delay. So one of the, the feedback we get quite a lot is that um, the OEMs provide a new, let's say there was a best recipe um, uh, published on the Lenovo site last week, but it's not an LCM yet. Um, and that's because we still haven't done the testing. So even though it's been published last week, um, we have to then go through and run our tests in LCM in conjunction with Lenovo Engineering before we you'll see it in LCM as an available update. So there will be a lag. Um, we don't anticipate it to be so long. Um, there is pressure, obviously, because of the reasons around uh, Spectre and Meltdown and, and you know, zero day vulnerabilities to get it out quickly. Um, but we are trying to uh, at least get to a quarterly cadence uh, across the manufacturers just to cut back on the two and uh, back and forth and, and all that. So um, do, don't be surprised if you do go to Lenovo's website um, you know, and see new versions uh, before you see them pop up in LCM. Cool, thank you. Um, all right, another question from John. Um, is there a single best practice guide that covers these processes? Uh, so is there a guide that explains the step that needs to be followed and in what sequence and what uh, tool needs to be used? So in terms of, um, uh, there is a, 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 I can find the link and I'll post it in the chat here. Um, uh, the, on the Nutanix portal, there is an upgrade uh, best practice recommendations for upgrades. Um, obviously we want to get rid of the need for such a thing and have it all done automatically. But while we're, as I said, while we're in this transition period, uh, there are some things that you sort of should be following. So, um, uh, but in terms of specifics around the best recipe, I'll, Charlie, I'll probably leave that to you. Um, yeah. But yes, there is a, a, a software side posted on the portal. So I'll, I'll just get that link and I'll post it in the chat. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Um, so John, just from, from a Lenovo perspective, um, uh, look, we, we do have a lot of discussions around this. Um, look, short answer is that uh, no, there is no best practices guide from Lenovo around upgrading HX specifically in combination with, LC with LCM and, and, and one click. 
Um, it is something that we are sitting down next week to discuss. Uh, we're aware that it's, it's probably a gap and we could, we could probably do a little bit better around that documentation. Um, having said that, uh, one of the links that uh, was on the previous slide um, is around the firmware update policy using xClarity. So absolutely, there is a lot of documentation um, around how to do that. It's just not HX specific. All right. Um, any other questions? Not putting up their hand. No, that looks to be about it. Um, well, look, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Uh, we, we really do appreciate it. Um, I think, you know, as, a, as an organisation and as a team, we'd probably like to do uh, more of these webinars. So if there are any suggestions um, uh, around, um, uh, if there are any suggestions around um, uh, any other topics or, or content that you'd like covered um, or, or any more questions in relation to what we've discussed today, uh, please reach out directly to Dan or myself. Uh, we'll be more than happy to, to, to help and facilitate. Um, and I think I'll pass it over Nadia. Is there anything else um, to, to close out the call on, on your end? All good. Thanking everyone for participating and attending today. And also if anyone has any follow-up questions to just engage the Lenovo HX team. That's it. Perfect. Thank Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. See you later. Bye.